Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today I have a very exciting video to share with you. Today I will be answering a few questions to celebrate me being one year on YouTube. So I started my channel last year at the end of December with a bullet journal video and oh boy has my content changed from there. I thought I would dedicate this video to learn a little bit about me, my channel, the struggles, the highs, the lows of what I've gone through with creating content here on YouTube. So in case you are interested in learning what the behind the scenes is like for a YouTube creator, just keep on watching and uh, thank you guys so much for making the whole last year so successful and awesome. I love hearing your feedback and answering all of your questions. So thank you so much. And with that, let's get into the video. The first question is, why did you start a YouTube channel? So when I first made my channel, I did actually kind of have a short video on why I made my channel, but I basically have been thinking about making a channel for years because I grew up watching YouTube and different creators, and I thought it was really cool that you could share your ideas, you could share your art, you could share your thoughts, opinions, and you could share advice to help others. And so I started my channel because I wanted to help other people find their path, especially in STEM, so math and computer science, because I felt that when I was in school, there wasn't a lot of women and female representation, and also there wasn't a lot of guidance in terms of how to navigate your classes and how you can graduate on time, and so I ended up being uh, one of the few people to graduate with a double major in math and computer science and I felt like I didn't know how to do that because I didn't see anyone else do it and so I want to help people that are on a similar path or they are curious about technology, they're curious about computer science and then also I have a fun creative passion for makeup and so I include that on my channel as well. Now that leads to the second question which is what is your channel about? So I like to combine technology, computer science, and makeup on my channel. I thought originally I could just do one thing and then I got bored. I had started with bullet journaling because I'm someone who loves to plan out my life. I love writing things down. I love writing down deadlines and scheduling my time. And then I quickly realized that there was a lot of pressure to film and make my art perfect. So I didn't like doing bullet journaling videos as much, but I did really like making advice videos and tips and giving my own personal experiences for uh, you know what it's like being in computer science and tech and cybersecurity and math. And so I think that it's really cool that I can combine you know computer science, math, and also makeup on this channel and some lifestyle stuff too because some stuff I get really excited about. Like when I first moved into my apartment, that was like a huge thing because I have lived with roommates and it was really nice to be on my own for the first time. The next question is, who is your target audience? So I originally made, you know, different kinds of content and I wanted to appeal to people that were in high school or college that were trying to find their path in school and uh, I wanted to make computer science seem a very accessible and, and wonderful thing to learn. So I definitely designed my content more for students, but I think that I want it to be open for anyone who just likes watching my videos. I'm really thankful to get your feedback and your comments and likes and everything um, because you guys inspire me. I like to take ideas from the comments and turn them into videos and I turn a lot of what my family suggests and my friends whenever they say something that I need to do, like maybe I can make a video video on technical interviews, that's something I want to do and that's something that was requested. And so yeah, I like that I have kind of a wide range of people that watch my content and um, that they can learn something from it. So I'm really happy about that. Now the next question is, what is a fun fact about you? So I did competitive gymnastics for probably like 10 years and then I did trampoline and tumbling for like 3 years and then I did uh, cheerleading in high school and I did show choir and then I ended up coaching gymnastics but the fun fact is that from all of that is I can hold a handstand for a very long time and right now I'm not in like the best shape ever but I could probably hold one for 30 seconds solid like solid 30 second handstand and then maybe if I like worked a little bit more I could do a minute that's where I'm going to be a little ambitious with myself but stay tuned 2021 one minute handstand okay I'm gonna do it now the next question is who inspired you to make a YouTube channel well okay so this 
I mean, I grew up watching YouTube and all sorts of content, like anything from, you know, computer science, tech, and educational to like funny, like Jenna Marbles. And, and I also, um, you know, saw different kinds of creators and what they did on the platform. And um, I did love makeup. Like I learned makeup in middle school because in middle school I had like deep cystic acne. And so I thought that if I could do really cool eye makeup, then people would look at my eyes and not my acne ridden face. And so I did want to start like a makeup YouTube channel a lot sooner, but I also knew that like my confidence and the ability for me to commit time um, wasn't going to work out the best when I was like in high school and college. So I decided to wait until after college. Uh, but anyway, so who inspired me to make a channel? I'd say it was other creators on the platform and um, I could do like a separate video on like different creators that I watch and like my top creators, but different creators on the platform and how fearlessly they showed their ideas and expressed themselves. And um, yeah, I love that about YouTube that, you know, you can just be yourself on the platform. How long does it take you to plan a video? So this is a good question because when I first started, I didn't plan at all really. And that made me suffer later when I was trying to edit. It just takes longer if you're, when you film, you just don't have like a good quality video because you didn't plan it first. Um, so I'd say for a lot of my advice videos, I'd say like 45 minutes to an hour to plan. Um, and yeah, it's usually just scribbles and bullet points. It's nothing like fully scripted because I think I would kind of stress out if it was scripted. Um, and you, you never have to, you never have to do something one way or not. If you want to start a YouTube channel, if scripts work for you, that's totally cool. And if no bullet points and just winging it works for you, that's awesome. So yeah, for me, it takes me like 45 minutes to an hour. And then the next question is, how long does it take you to edit a video? Okay, so I used to think I should spend a lot and a lot of time on different special effects and different like things that I can put in. But then I realized like not a lot of my audience is really gonna notice those little things that take forever. And so I cut back on the editing and also just being here on a year, like being here and, and doing videos for a full year has made me a lot faster at editing. So I'm thankful for that. I'd say on a, like a tech touch up Tuesday video, makeup style videos, maybe like um, an hour to an hour and a half of editing. And then for other types of videos, like depending on how well I plan, it could be like two to four hours. Now that's just the editing process. There's other stuff that goes into the YouTube videos, like making a description and a title and a thumbnail. Um, and those take much more time. So the full process of like planning, filming, editing, and like posting, I'd say probably like four to eight hours. Like I think the shortest video I've made probably like three or four hours depending on it like my one of my shortest videos is like the christmas lights video the happy holidays video and that one probably took me like i don't know an hour and a half to two hours so that one was really short and sweet and then other videos i've spent like a lot of time on um some i've probably spent eight to ten hours on um so yeah it's kind of up to you what you know content you want to make and how long you'll devote to it and uh, whether that's worth it to you. But yeah, I definitely spent a lot more time in the beginning and now I've cut it down, so I'm really happy about that. The next question is, what is the best thing about being a YouTube creator? And oh my goodness, there's a lot of things I love about being a YouTube creator. I'd say I really like that you can connect and reach out to people even from across different countries and completely different backgrounds from you. And I think it's cool to learn like how different like someone's computer science journey is from mine and what questions they have. And so I like that I can connect and help those people that otherwise like without the internet and without YouTube, I never would have been able to connect with it all. So that's definitely the best part of being a creator. What is the worst thing about being a YouTube creator? So because my channel is kind of on the smaller side, I haven't dealt with a lot of like negativity or hate comments or something weird, but I would say probably the, the, the worst thing about being a YouTube creator is like kind of worrying about certain people that you will never see online. And so just kind of realizing that like what you're doing is really good but there still may be those weird trolls out there that, that may try to bring you down. Um, and then um, you just kind of have to deal with that. And then also maybe just putting pressure on yourself as a creator is the worst part because you have expectations for yourself, your channel and your content. And um, 
you know, how good you do and the videos you make are not necessarily reflected by the number of views you get or the number of likes or the number of dislikes or the number of comments. And so in your head, you do want your videos to get seen by more people. You do want more people to like your content. And that's a great thing, but just making sure that you don't internalize it too much because again, like, you should just be making content because it makes you happy, not because you want to be like a viral internet star, uh, because otherwise that may be a goal that just isn't attainable because again, like the internet is unpredictable and uh, shouldn't put pressure on yourself for things that you can't control. What is the easiest part about making videos? So for me, uh, I have like a list of ideas that I like to do. So I think for me the easiest part is writing down an idea. Just writing it down and being super inspired. And then everything else is really hard. Um, but yeah, towards the end it's harder. But in the very beginning when you think of an idea and you write it down, it's the easiest part and it's like really exciting too. And then with that, what is the worst part about making videos. I'd say the worst part for me is when I have to come up with words in the keyword search or tags. So basically when you upload a video to YouTube, you have your title and you have your description. But maybe you don't know this if you're not a creator, but you can put different tags and different keywords, which basically make it so that if someone searches that keyword, your video will come up in that search bar. And so there's like a lot of different science to it. There's algorithms and there's different techniques you can use so that, you know, if I have a video that's, you know, how do I double major in math and computer science, then I need to make sure that my keywords match that title and that they're relevant so that if someone searches something like that, then they can see my video and they can realize like, yeah, that is kind of what I'm looking for and they'll watch it. But for me, I always feel like it's an annoying kind of guessing game where sometimes I feel like, well, my, I'm a smaller creator, like how are my videos going to get seen if they're on like page 37 of the search results? So I'd say the hardest part for me is definitely the keyword search and the tags. Um, the thumbnails are pretty fun and um, the description is pretty straightforward. I try to have like relevant links to other videos in my descriptions and so that stuff is like pretty easy. Um, but yeah, definitely the keyword search and the tags. I don't like that at all. Now the next thing is tips or advice for others starting a YouTube channel. Okay, so if you have a really awesome phone with lots of space, you can totally use your phone to start your channel if you want to record videos on your phone. You can also use your laptop if that has a camera. For me, I decided I didn't want to have conflicting storage space, so I got my own uh, camera. This is like the Canon G7X Mark II from like Amazon or something. It works really well and um, I suggest if you use a camera or if you use your phone, whatever works, make sure you have your batteries available. So my camera came with one battery and then I decided to get two extra batteries and so that way I can have like three fully charged batteries and switch between them when I am say like if you're filming like your travel videos. So especially like if you're outside for you know 24 hours and you run up want to record things throughout the day it's really helpful to have extra batteries and then i'd say advice for starting the biggest thing is to just start if you really really want to do this you learn the most by doing with this kind of a thing and i know that's like really scary but i think of each video as a way to improve myself and make a better video it's not necessarily to get a specific reaction or to get a specific view count or um, to increase my subscribers. If I increase my subscribers, that's great. But I think the, the biggest thing is make content you want to watch, like make content that you like making. And then just remember that what's most important is that you are proud of what you make and it's coming from you that you want to do this, not from I want, you know, to get a thousand views. I want to get 10,000 views or a million views. You should just remember that like by learning and by doing it, every video is an opportunity to improve. It's not all going to be perfect. And so I say to start right away just to start because if you plan and plan and plan, you're still not going to learn the things that you're going to learn from just doing it, going through the process of filming, editing, and posting. Um, and also too, when you post more videos, you get to interact more with your audience and see like what they like and what they dislike so it's really just good to dive in if you're ready and make the content that you want to make
The next question is, what is the most rewarding part of being a YouTuber? Okay, so for me, my biggest, most successful video is on my how I double majored in math and computer science. And that video has like the most comments of any of my videos and the most views. And um, it's over 3,000 views, which is kind of crazy because when I was making that video and planned the video, I wasn't sure how it was going to do. But I think what I learned was, you know, how rewarding it is for these people to reach out in the comments and ask me questions. Like, you know, they were, you know, debating which major to choose or what to minor in and they wanted to learn more about the value of computer science and that they felt comfortable asking me. So I think that is really rewarding just to be able to answer people's questions and give them advice. Next question is, what kind of opportunities have you received from YouTube? Okay, so I'd say I'm like a very small creator, like I'm not huge or anything, but I will say on Instagram and through YouTube, like I have received uh, different things that they're a mix of scams and legitimate offers. Like on Instagram, there's some stuff like, hey, like if you take a picture in our jewelry, you can keep the jewelry. So not necessarily like I'm gonna be on like a thousand dollar contract, like nothing like crazy. Um, but I have gotten some legitimate offers to make videos for different groups and I'm not gonna name anything, but that's kind of a cool thing if you really want to do video editing as like a profession. For me, this is kind of like my own like personal fun thing, so I don't think I would want to edit videos for other people right now. Um, but that was kind of a cool thing and so yeah, it'll be interesting to see if like in the next years if that changes or whatnot, but I would just say if you start on YouTube, if you get big or if you don't get big, just beware of scams and um, you know, if an Instagram page has hundreds of thousands of followers and they want you to model for them, you know, that might not be the best decision. Uh, so just look into things and always Google if you're unsure of a company to work with. Uh, Google helps you find, you know, the real tea, the real scoop on different companies and whether they are legit or whether they will scam you. The next question is, how would you feel if an employer found out about your YouTube channel? Okay, so this one I've thought about a lot because for me, I like being transparent and honest with you guys, but I also know that the internet is a scary place and so I have to protect certain things and keep certain personal information private. However, I see my YouTube channel as an asset. I see my YouTube channel as an additional skill set and something that reflects the things that I've learned. So I see it as a tool to help me. And if an employer for some reason said that because of your YouTube channel we don't want to hire you, I'd say, okay, I respect that decision and I would go with a different company. Because for me, this is a hobby. It's a fun thing. I feel like it helps other people. Um, I don't really see why there would be something on my channel that I would be worried if an employer found out about because again, I like to be honest and if they have a problem with something that you know I'm open and honest about, then I think that wouldn't work. That wouldn't be a partnership that I would want to partake in. And so I think again like you know being able to edit videos and do social media and kind of market yourself in a certain way and also with youtube i've learned to talk in a certain way and try to articulate my ideas more effectively so i think there are a lot of skills that can be learned from having a youtube channel and i think that's something that although i wouldn't put on my resume like go check out my youtube channel it is something where if an employer found out I would totally have a conversation with them and explain to them all of the wonderful things that I have been able to do with my YouTube channel. Okay, second to last question, what has changed about your content from when you first started? So I originally was like, I'm gonna do bullet journal videos because it's artistic and I thought like I won't put myself out there as much and um, it can be like a fun artistic hobby. And it really was, but I realized I didn't have as much time to dedicate to bullet journaling and to, to different artistic things that I was doing because it's one thing to draw and color, but then it's another thing to set up a camera and always focus on whether you're in frame and then it takes up a lot of camera, camera space because you're recording for hours if that's how long it takes you, then you have to edit the footage. So yeah, so the art thing is like more of like, I wanna do that when I feel like it and when I'm inspired, but not every 
every week and not twice a week and nothing like that. So then I had some videos on, you know, advice and I did some makeup videos. So I love, you know, the artistry of makeup. It's something that I find really fun. And then with my computer science and math content, it's been awesome to share my experiences with you guys and answer your questions and also, you know, take your ideas and make them into videos because some of these things like I didn't even think about and then I realized like, oh, this could really help someone and that's one of the reasons why I think I'm gonna make some like you know how to get your first internship videos or how to how to do well on a technical interview because I think that would help out a lot of people because technical interviews are stressful um, and so yeah so I kind of evolved my content from bullet journaling to then like makeup and like I had like one or two like outfit videos but um, because I do think fashion is awesome, but I just know like for me it's not something I could make every week and then I and then I you know stuck with mostly computer science and makeup and I like having the balance and I like doing a few lifestyle videos like Christmas holiday gift guides um, and so yeah and I'm excited to see if my content evolves even more it kind of sounds like I'm all over the place but for me you know if you have an idea and you want to run with it like there's no harm in just going with the flow. If it makes you happy, then you should do it. The final question, which is the juiciest question, it is, does being a YouTube creator negatively affect your mental health? Is it worth it? So I will start off by saying absolutely it is worth it. I think you should weigh the pros and the cons if you want to start a YouTube channel. For me, the pros of being able to reach out to people that need advice, that's a huge pro. That's something that really drives my channel. Um, the pros of being able to share and express myself and um, create different things. Like, I love that so much. And then you have some of the cons. Like, if there's people that leave mean comments or if there's, um, like, weirdos that try to find you on the internet, that's a strong con. And I can see why um, that, you know, makes people not want to be on this platform and engage with this platform. For me, I think, yeah, the pros absolutely outweigh the cons and I am so happy that I have my YouTube channel. Um, and then I will also say, does it negatively affect my mental health? I'd say, you know, it's kind of like any kind of hobby that you have and living your life. You have to do things in moderation. You have these stories about like YouTube creators being, staying up all night trying to edit a video or post a video, and that's a real thing. But a lot of times like we want to do that. Like I know for me, I've never felt, again, like I've never had a sponsorship. I've never been like paid for a video. I've never made money on YouTube. I'm very small. So I don't feel like pressure to, um, you know, deliver at a certain time. And so for me, my mental health is like pretty fine and I would say that like this hobby was one of the few things I could work on and enjoy during 2020 because again it didn't hurt anyone I wasn't getting exposed to anything and I wasn't putting other people in danger so I found that this has been really positive for my mental health and I really appreciate that but again like if you do become like a larger creator and then there's expectations of sponsorships and money like if you end up having your livelihood depend on youtube again the internet is crazy and unpredictable so i can see how that would be stressful but for me absolutely youtube is completely worth it i'm so happy i started my channel i'm so happy i've grown here one complete year with you guys on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the video or if you have any additional questions, please comment them down below. I'd love to make more Q&A videos if you liked this one. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday and I will see you very soon.